let, let yourself go a little bit and then hear it and then realize what you're hearing is ice. My name is Bill Kovitz. I come from uh, Cheshire, Connecticut in the United States and i uh, been carving ice for 22 years now. For me as an ice carver to really enjoy an ice concert, you want it cold. At, you know, minus 20, minus, oh, minus 20 is fantastic. Get past there, yes, it gets cold for everybody, you know, but but minus 20, the ice sings, the, the resonance, how long sound, you know, it continues to vibrate and it just sings. I mean, ice sings. Creating instruments out of pure nature, I find it uh, very meaningful to do that. My name is Tadia Isungset. I come from Norway. All my life I've been doing music. A horn that I'm making, it's a wal walrus uh, tusk horn that I'm, I'm preparing for the concert. But this ice um, has come from the glacier. So I can't put a date on it, but just imagine how old this ice possibly could be. This ice might be 1,000 year old, it might be 100,000 year old. And the transparent ice is the oldest ice because it's, it's really underneath and it's pressed out to the ocean, out to the sea. And that's the sound we will hear. fighting the weather so so much we're trying to save as much in in the freezers as possible here in in Svalbard in the Arctic and uh, we're having to use chest freezers to save small pieces and um, as we're carving it it's just kind of falling apart and everything we carve it sits for half an hour and it falls apart so the uh, best bet is just bringing more ice on lots of it and hopefully uh, we get some cold weather and we just threw the entire concert overboard and had to start from scratch again. And I'd say it's heartbreaking, you know, if it's really bad. We're fighting these conditions that we shouldn't be fighting here. And so if nothing else, I hope we're proving a point here, you know, through our suffering and, you know, the world should be suffering with us. I never thought you need a freezer in the Arctic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> To be here in this location is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that we harvest the ice here and we make the instruments and we actually perform here. To be on Svalbard in that fjord and play music on ice instruments and when you're surrounded by this, uh, it's a once in a lifetime experience. You sort of speak um, a language from the nature. Uh, it's the nature sounds, and we bring them to the human language, which people understand. There are lots of uh, water on, on the planet, on, also even in our bodies. It's an important part of our life, is the ocean. And if the ocean doesn't, I mean, if the ocean doesn't thrive, then we don't thrive. Maybe human beings, don't see the problems with the ocean because it's not in our garden, to say so. So I think um, in general that it's very important that we treat uh, nature with respect and gentle. Um, also the ice instruments, we have to treat them very gentle, otherwise they break. I broke a lot of ice sticks <laughs> during the, the process because you had to be very careful in the train. So the fact that you make instruments out of ice and you kind of just, when you're done with it, it's ice, so it will go back into nature and it's kind of a part of nature. The nature can give us more than what we can see. It can give us sounds and it can give us um, very much beauty. And that's what I think all this project is about, showing the world all the beautiful things that are in the ocean. Thank you.